The Edge Pitch tool, which is found in the Function List tool category, is used to measure the average, minimum, and maximum distances between pairs of edges. It has two main modes called Center Pitch and Gap Pitch, which can be freely selected in the tool. For example, it can be used to measure the center pitch of pins on a connector or the thickness of each pin. This tool can also be found under the Dimensions Geometry category in the Measure Width subcategory. The only difference here is the mode is either fixed to center pitch or gap pitch depending on the selection in this category. We will add the tool from the function list. The first step with any tool setup is to register the image. This saves a reference image into the program settings and can be used to set up the tool. As you can see, this has already been done and we are ready to set up our inspection region. This is the area on the image where you want to perform the edge pitch measurements. If you are doing a linear type measurement, a rectangle or rotated rectangle is typically used. If you use a ring type region, you can perform a pitch measurement on a circular part, like a gear. In this example, we want to measure the center pitch of these pins on the IC chip, so I will draw a rectangle around one set of the pins. Next, you will set up the desired detection conditions for the edges. Uh, one of the selections is the mode, as mentioned before. It can be set for center pitch or gap pitch. In this example, we'll start with center pitch because we want to measure the center to center distance between these pairs of edges, i.e. these pins. Also, you need to set the appropriate scan direction. So since our edges are going in the up-down direction, we need to change our scan direction from either top to bottom or bottom to top. As you can see, as soon as we set the appropriate direction, we are performing the measurement. You can then continue to set up the other detection conditions as needed. Once we have our edge detection conditions complete and we're measuring the proper edges, we can go ahead and set our judgment conditions. This is the pass-fail criteria for the tool. We can set a tolerance on the count, which is the number of pitches. In this case, we have 18 pins, so there's 17 center to center distances. So if we want to make sure there's no pins missing, we can set an upper or lower limit of 17. So if there is less than 17 pins or more than 17 pins, the part will fail. And we can also set an upper and lower limit on the minimum and maximum pitch level. So I will go ahead and set the upper limit to about 48 and the bottom one to 39. And you would set this according to the application. Now when you're setting the limits, you could work off the reference image or you can run some actual parts to the system and confirm the actual measurements as you run some parts. Click OK when the tool is done. We can now confirm the operation of the tool. As you can see here on this current image, this is a good part, so our pitch is passing and the count is passing. What we can do is run some parts, some test parts. You can see here is one with a missing pin. So it fails because of the count, but it also fails because of the pitch, because since the pin's missing, uh, the pitch was affected as well. So uh, here's another example of the pins passing correctly and the bent pin. Now, in this example, we, get, we could adjust our rectangle a little tighter if we want to be a little bit more accurate, because when the pins are bent, we'll see the biggest effect more towards the end of the pin. So what I can do is just click Edit, go back in here, and just tighten up this region a little bit maybe more towards the end of the pins, and that should be pretty good. So again, we can confirm the operation, and you can see we're getting a little bit more accurate measurement when it comes to the bent pins. So that's it with the first setup. Now, for this example, we want to repeat the same exact steps for the three other sides of this chip. Um, we could reset up the tool, or one easy thing is to simply copy this tool, since we already have the desired settings, and paste the tool. So we'll right click and copy, then right click and paste. So it'll paste a duplicate here. And then we can edit and simply click the region and drag it to the other side for this example. So what I can do is drag it to the left side here. And it has all the same exact settings we just set up. Everything, the limits are already set up, so we're all good. So just click OK. So now we've got the two sides covered. So now I can go ahead and paste again another duplicate. So, because we need to cover the top and bottom section here. So again, I'll paste it, I'll click Edit. Now for this example, we're going to have to adjust the region so that it's on the top of the part. So what I'll have to do is drag this box up here, 
like so, and then drag this. Now, this, the edges on the top and bottom are obviously going in the opposite or perpendicular direction, so we need to change our scan direction. So I'm going to simply change it from left to right. And you can see, again, we're ready to go. Our limits are still set already from before. Everything is good. Click OK. So now what I'll do is I'll copy this tool that I just set up and paste it and simply move the region down towards the bottom here. So I'll grab it, grab the region, and move this one down to the bottom. So now we have all four regions set. Now when you're setting up multiple tools, it will only display one region at a time, but if you wanted to see multiple regions at the same time, there's this button right here I can click. It'll kind of show us all four regions at once. So again, now that we have all four tools set up, we can go ahead and confirm the operation of all the tools. If you want to see the individual readings of each tool, just simply click on the tool, and that will, is what will be displayed to the right here. As you can see, when you're testing out these and running these tools, they will turn red if they fail the upper and lower limits, as you can see here, and the measurement values will turn red. So whatever measured value fails, it will turn red as you can see here. And if the tool passes, everything will be in green. Now, in this example, let's say we wanted to measure the thickness of each pin or the width of each pin individually. We can also use the edge pitch tool, but we'll use what is known as gap pitch mode, as mentioned earlier. So again, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy one of these tools and paste it. And then we'll go ahead and edit the tool. So. As I already showed you, center pitch measures the center to center distance between pairs of edges. But if we change this to what's called gap pitch mode, it will switch over and now measure the width of each pair. So you can see the individual width. So we're getting the width of each individual pin, the average min and max. Now, of course, I need to reset my tolerances now because those were previously set on the center pitch. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. My count is now 18 because there's 18 pins. And then again, I can Go ahead and let me just clear this tolerance. We can set our tolerance accordingly. So if we wanted to set a tolerance for the thickness of the pin, we can, again, do the same kind of thing. So that is what's called gap pitch. Now, another handy setting that, will, that can be used in this mode, or the edge pitch tool, is let's say you want to measure the distance between the pins themselves. So not the thickness or width of the pin, but the width of the gap between them. We can, one thing we can do is try to adjust the region so it doesn't see that first edge, but there's a handy setting here in the detection conditions. If you click the details, it's called first edge. So you can dictate what the first edge that it sees is. So in this example, we'll change it for, to dark to light. So in other words, the first dark to light transition right here is the first edge that it will count, and then it will count all the edges from then. So now we're getting the distance in between the pins instead of the thickness of the pin. So that's the first edge setting. So I'll go ahead and set that back to both. And that is gap pitch. So that's it. You click OK and the settings are done. So I could copy this same tool and do the same thing for the rest of the uh, measurements if I want to. Here's an example of using a ring type inspection region to perform the same type of gap or center pitch measurement around a circular part. Again, this, it's the setup is exactly the same, except you use an arc or ring as your inspection region. And then you can choose center pitch, as you can see here. So again, it's doing the same thing, finding the center to center distance between pairs of edges. Or you can use gap pitch, just like before, so the, the width of each gear. When you're using a ring type inspection region, the scan direction will be clockwise or counterclockwise, and it will start at what is called the starting angle, which is this line in red. If you need to change that, you can change it under the detailed conditions. It's called starting angle. So basically what it'll do is it'll start at the start angle, scan for edges around clockwise here, and again, perform the measurement. You can then set your limits accordingly. So in this case, there's nine gear teeth. So we can set a tolerance here to pass and fail if there's any missing teeth. And then we can set our upper and lower tolerance for the width of the gear if we want. Again, click OK, and we can confirm our tool operation here. Here's a missing gear and then here's the passing part with all the proper gears. So again, the setup's exactly the same as you just saw. You're just using a ring or an arc as the inspection region. In the function list, there's also a tool called edge pairs. This is essentially the same, performs the same operation as the edge pitch, but with one difference, which I'll get to in one moment here. 
It's also under dimensions geometry measure width category as gap pitch edge pairs. So I'll go ahead and add one of these real quick just to show you the difference. The measurement itself is the same. It's going to perform distances between pairs of edges, um, gap pitch or center pitch. So I'll go ahead and set it for center pitch. But the only difference here is you can set up two different edge scan conditions. So uh, if you have a condition where maybe the connector pins is real bright on one side and real dark on the other side of the pin and it's hard to get one edge detection setting to get both edges. What you can do is the first scan can you can set the settings for be made for example light to dark so you could set it up to get that first light to dark change and on the second scan you could set it up to do the dark to light transition and you have two different edge detection conditions for uh, each direction and then again the measurements the same it either does center to pitch or gap pitch. In summary, the edge pitch tool is a great way to measure the average, minimum, and maximum distance between pairs of edges, whether it be the center to center between the pairs or the width of the pair itself. You can do that on linear parts like connectors and IC chips like this, or as you've seen on round parts like gears.